Hey guys, we got this 2015 Dodge Ram half ton. It came in for an ABS light. And like most of these, um, you know what? Spoiler alert, it's got a bad wheel bead, <laughs> wheel bead, bad wheel speed sensor. Most ABS lights are on for that reason. So I'll just go through basically what I do, especially on this sort of style. Super common. They're all, well, I won't say they're all the same, but. You run into this far more often than you run into anything else for an ABS sensor. So if we look, we have a code uh, C0034-1D and it says right front uh, speed sensor circuit out of range. Well, for the most part, that, that right there would be enough for you to um, throw a new hub at it because of course on this style right here, Here's our new part. You can get some um, speed sensors by themselves, but you know what? Uh, a lot of times they don't come out very easily and you pretty much have to drill at the innards and just, you know what? It's not worth it because usually the bearings got damaged too. So this is a catch all be all, so to speak, right? Not only does it have the wheel bearing, so everything's gonna be held in tight and proper, but it's got the sensor and it's got the tone wheel all in one unit. So you get one of these kinds of vehicles if it's an integrated hub bearing assembly with a sensor and you got a faulty. If one wheel is reporting a faulty signal, then this is pretty much it. Not always the case on every other vehicle. You know, Fords have the, the ring, the, the tone wheel ring on the axle and they can split and they can float and they can do all kinds of things. But on this sort of style, same thing with Chevys, you know what, if it's one complete unit, you see a wheel that's acting up, you get a hub bearing assembly for that side and you're done. Of course, some older Chevys um, like to have issues with the harnesses, but uh, I'll put a picture up um, of the, uh, the harness repair kits that you get for those. But aside from that style, you pretty much hardly ever see harness issues for a wheel speed sensor issue, it's usually just, you know, the sensor itself. So all I do is I'll go to the data. I'm just going to select left front, right front. And I don't know if you caught that, but it's glitching out right now, just sitting there and well, clearly it's not moving, but graph that, graph that. Now, yeah, you can see it just glitching out right now. Uh, we go zero, 15. I hate how you have to set manual scales on this auto, but what do you do? Okay, well, right away, you can see she's bad. Just glitching right out. But anyways, so what I'll do, hmm, how do I do this with one hand? Let me go slow down the speed there. So all I'm gonna do, that's recording, I'll just spin the wheel and, uh-oh, it all just disappeared. Great, why did it do that? Okay, maybe I'll try and get you on a spot where you can see as well. Right front. Hmm. I don't know why it's not displaying it as the way it should, but you can see it's flying out all over the place. Now, normally when a wheel speed sensor fails, normally it fails as it's coming down to a stop. So I'll bring you over to the other side, show you what it should look like. And maybe Can you guys see that? Okay, we're on the left side now spin that Now of course those jagged bumps that's me kind of you know grabbing a new spot Doing that right because I can't spin it totally freely, but otherwise you see that there's no dropouts 
right? That's what it should look like. Should be able to get slow without any glitches. Whereas on this side over here, go back to that side. Right, it's just glitching out all over the place. Well, I think what's happening, zero, it's flying right off the scale. Let's go with 50. Yeah. Holy crap, I'm spinning it fast. Look at that, well, that was what, 100 kilometers an hour? <laughs> Anyways, you get the idea. You know what, on these units here, where it's an integrated hub bearing assembly with sensor, with tone wheel, you see that sort of stuff, boom, you're done. It's getting a sensor. So, uh, let me finish getting this up on the hoist. We'll yank that wheel off and let's change this. Let's change this hub. Okay, so hopefully you guys can get uh, some kind of angle here. I know it's kind of awfully tight, but we'll try to work around it. See what it shows up like, see what happens. All right, so we'll just start yanking the wheel off. Get all the nuts off. And this my battery's dying. Okay, so wheels out of the way. Um, most of these are pretty much the same. The so Dodges, they can be a little bit of a pain in the butt um, just because it's difficult to get the axle out of here. You usually have to split the upper ball joint in order to get the axle out. Um, uh, do, 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 but We'll see if we can't work around that. So, just like every other one, you know, you get get the little tools, kind of pull the wheel speed sensor stuff out of the way. I'm gonna kind of grab you to show you some stuff. Okay, so, you know, wheel speed sensor, just kind of pop all these off. And so if we see right here with these two little holes right there, that's where our connector is. Come on. Let me get you down for a second. So of course these all have these red lock tabs. Holy crap, pop them up. If they're full of dirt, these connectors, try to lift the tab with your tool. Try not to break the connector. Oh, we'll get that out of the way. Our uh, caliper will just take off. What is that? I think these are 21s, aren't they? We'll just take off the caliper you guys see? Hopefully. Just the, uh, the bracket mounting bolts. No sense separating the caliper. Okay, we'll get that off this side. Those are the big bolts, 21 mils. So now what we do, put that over there. Yank this off. Anytime you're doing anything, you got a wheel off, you're at a corner, make sure you check the brakes. You don't want to be somewhere. Try explaining that to a customer that, oh, you were right there, but you didn't check the brakes and they went metal to metal the next day. 
makes you a jerk. And hook, 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 hook. Hook. Oh, I just tried. Um, hook. Um, so all I end up doing is I don't think I even have any of them around here anymore. Um, but not not these style um, rubber hangers, but the the big thick rubber ones. I just take the hooks off of them. That's usually what I use. If that makes sense. Hook that somewhere like there. I'll put you over there. Sure. Okay. Uh, if you have a newish vehicle and you got these little speed nuts here holding the rotor on, they're not necessary, they're not required. Um, what I've always been told, I don't know if it's true or not, but just what I've been told seems to make sense, is that they're on there from the factory so that when they, if they need to rotate the car or lift it upside down or whatever while they're building it, then they don't fall off. That's what I've been told. Is it true? I don't know. But they're on there from the factory. I usually don't put them back on. Come on. Well, you know what? Get near the. If they're not coming off on you that well, put some safety glasses on and get a punch. Going out a corner. And they just break off just like that. But make sure, as you can see that, make sure you got safety glasses on because they go flying. And then, rotor. Air hammer. We gotta put these back on. So I just hit around the hub surface. Don't hit the rotor itself because we're keeping this rotor and eventually this will work its way off. Just like that. Alrighty. Rotor goes down. Now if you want, if it makes you feel better, um, the bolts where they come through not with this. Hmm. Aha! You can spray them with Move It. Sometimes it makes you feel better. Does it do anything? Not really. Put this guy back on. It's a. Uh, 36 millimeter. Oh yeah, and then uh, might add, when you're replacing a hub bearing assembly because of a bad wheel speed sensor, you don't always feel play in the bearing. So you know what, when you grab the wheel back and forth, it's not always a sign of a bad, uh, wheel speed sensor, right? You know, your bearing can be totally fine. But, it is what it is. Um, so, if the axle's stuck in there really good, 
Then I use air hammer. Of course, I don't use that bit. You're gonna mushroom the end of the axle. I'll use kind of a, a slight tapered chisel. And then if it's particularly bad because it can stick, when you push it out, it can stick again. It can kind of come forward and stick again. What I'll do is I'll spray lots, I'll move it, whatever in there. And then, you know, I can work it back and forth, right? Push it in, spray some more. And if it's really stuck, what you can do is you can put the nut back on there and pull it out. And just do that a few times just to help uh, get some spray in there. Sometimes on these when I'm doing um, bearings, depending upon how easy it is to turn the, the whole knuckle, uh, sometimes I'll pop off the outer tie rod end. I use this guy right here. Works really, really well on 99% of all um, tie rods. I can separate them with this. Very few, I have a really hard time getting the jaws around it. Um, I keep it in my cart. It's, it's so easy to use. It's so quick that I'll pull off tie rods all the time. It saves a little bit of time. On this one here, might not need to, but it is tricky getting to the nuts. So let me show you. Okay, so if you see those nuts there, the outer CV joints kind of in the way. So let me show you a trick with those. Okay, we can use, no. I'm trying to go a little quickly here as we've got quite a bit of stuff to do still. Don't use this guy very often, so the screw gets a little dry. Anytime you have metal under tension, put some lube on there, right? You'd never run a differential gear set without any gear oil in there. So same thing with these. You got a forcing screw, put some lube on there. So we'll hook this up. Hopefully I'll kind of grab a spot. it won't come off. Perfect. Now we don't go very tight with that because all we're trying to do there, let me show you. So with this puller on there, that keeps that axle all the way out. So if we grab our light again, So now we have more room to get to those nuts. Hopefully that's enough. All right, and these, these are the sort of thing I like to use um, these U-joint sockets for. I was going to buy the Astro Pneumatic set, but um, for whatever reason, I let my um, Snap-on rep talk me out of it. And I bought the set of ATD these guys right here and they have um, pins whereas the Astro Pneumatic set had uh, little screws, little set screws that hold them in. Well, these ones are junk. I let him buy, talk me into buying these because ha he had them on the truck, gave me a good deal. But you know what? These are junk. ATDs are junk. So kind of what I've been doing is whenever they break, because you know what, if I have them, they're not impact rated, but you know, I want to use my impact with them, right? So when everyone breaks, yes, I pay the money. I don't know if you can read that, but I do buy the snap-on ones, and then, then you can just continue using them however you want. You can destroy them, you can manhandle them. Because all, uh, all these brands of tools that you buy out of a catalog, good luck and warranty on any of them. I guess it's theoretically possible, but is it really worth the headache? Oh, I don't think so. So, for this style here, a lot of times I like to kind of crack them loose by hand to get a feel for them. 
because I don't want to round the fastener and sometimes you're, you're not on there very straight. And if they're factory, if they've never been off, they're usually pretty tight. One bolt out, they are 18s. Uh, maybe we'll keep that on the half inch. Number two. So now this also gives us a handy tool, a handy grab handle. Or you can rotate that out of the way. And on this still hub, there are three of these bolts. And they are tight, as they should be. Oh, yeah. Okay, bolt number three. Okay, so now you got the option of, or the task of how to get the hub off. There's many different ways you can do that. On the far side here, where the caliper goes, you can hit the edge of the hub here with a big hammer and just try and kind of work it. Um, hopefully that's enough. Uh, what I usually do because I'm lazy, I'll grab my air hammer and I'll grab, I grabbed it, which I didn't. I'll grab this sort of bit, just a, a flat punch. And I can just kind of work at the edges, the corners of the hub, just kind of rotating it back and forth. That'll usually free up any corrosion in there. And then a couple wax and usually it'll come right off. If you have one that's really, really, really nasty, what you can do is you can pound out a stud, you can cut it so it comes right out and you got a hole. And you can put a bolt in there and a nut, as long as you have enough length, and you have it so that the bolt is resting on the knuckle, and the nut's just on this side, and you can hold that nut with a wrench, so then when you're tightening the bolt, it causes the bolt to come in, and that bolt will push off of the knuckle, right? When you got one that's really nasty, that'll help you out. But, we'll just try the air hammer. So let's switch that around. Uh, hopefully you guys can see all this. Of course, I like to spray that really good. Again, does it do anything? No, but it makes us feel better. Ears.
Okay, so hopefully you can see that, but just by doing that, might have helped with that polar on there. But it did lift a little bit. So now some of this will go behind there. So now we can just try with just, it's a relatively small hammer, but why not? Can you guys see that? I'm gonna rotate you a little bit. attention to which way the dust shield goes pay attention to where the wheel speed sensor needs to go in so now what I'll do I'll clean up the inside of this knuckle it is aluminum so you want to be relatively gentle with it so I just use a three inch wire wheel on a die grinder. And then if you angle it, you can get it in there. similar metals. You gotta accidentally put a little too much on here, but whatever. Oh, I like to put a coating of anti seize on there. These little brushes that they give you in the can, of course, are never long enough. It's at that point where there's tons of anti seize still in there, but I can't reach any of it, of course. So then you just throw a screwdriver in there, grab a gob, put it on your surface you're working with, spread it around with a brush. Yeah, I put a lot, but that's okay. It'll push out We won't need that anymore. We'll get our new part. We'll get our dust shield. They do that. Hmm. Make sure you just cut the tape. Yeah. After all, that's why we changed this was the sensor. Oh my, we don't need to be damaging the new one. Okay, so you can see dirt went in. That's our side that went out. Sensor went at the top. So 
So sometimes you're fighting the axle, sometimes it's difficult to get these started. Make sure you start them by hand. Make sure you get them in multiple threads. Don't force them. So I'll see if I can't show you kind of what I'm doing, but I think you all get the idea. Right? We shove axle in. So we'll have to shove the axle in while well, with the back hand, grab that bolt, try to get the bolt through the dust shield. And then once it's through the dust shield, we can line up that hole. Okay, we got it through the dust shield. Push the axle back in some more. Get the bolt started. Come on. And sometimes with stuff like this, what I like to do is I'll use my little ratchet um, to get it started and then to make sure we're in multiple threads especially for the first one you want to make sure that first one's in okay good to that I've had this AC Delco electric ratchet for well over 10 years. Still holds up well, surprisingly. Okay, get you out of the glare. So if you see there, I just wanted to make sure I'm in a lot of threads but I don't want to put that first one in too many threads because I still want to be able to work with it to get those other three in, or two. Okay, we'll grab another one. And actually, it's been a while since I've worked in one of these. Um, you crack the upper uh, upper ball joint when you need to change the axle. But hmm, I am going back a ways because well, I haven't worked on that many of these for a while. I thought you had to pull. For whatever reason, I can't remember, but I thought you had to crack the upper ball joint for one of these style hubs. Maybe it's, I don't know. I'm just talking out of my butthole at the moment. And same thing with that bolt. We don't want to go in all the way. But we want to make sure that we're... Oh, 
come on. We want to make sure that we're started enough that it's not going to come off. Okay, so when I went to put this bolt in, you can see the angle in that CV joint. Uh, it was too much of an angle to really push the axle back in further to get, if you can see that bolt head above past that lip. Okay, so I have to straighten this out a little bit. Then I can push the axle in all the way. Oh. So again, we're not forcing it. Okay, I'm having a hard time getting the bolt head past the lip of that knuckle on the, sorry, the lip of the... Would the... So I'm going to try, put a little bit of lube in there, I'm try just giving her a little gentle tap. Okay, so can you guys see that we just got that lip there on uh, the outer cone of that CV axle and it was hanging up on there, just a bit of the angle. So it was so close though, a little bit of lube, a little bit of top, got her in there. Okay, tighten it up. Okay, so now all of those bolts 
are sticking through. And so they're all in many, many threads. So now we can go ahead with our impacts. We can make sure those are really nice and tight. Um, you know, it's a good idea to look up torque spec. And then we'll put our nut on there. Also really important to look that up. Um, you know, they're, typically they're in the range of 150 to 180 foot pounds, but again, look them up. One thing I will say on the passenger side, make sure you are putting either a new nut, of course this one didn't come with a new nut. So put a new nut, um, definitely always put a new cotter pin on there. Hopefully it is a cotter pin style. Um, if it's not a cotter pin style, you know, you got one like this, right? <laughs> especially on the passenger side. Loctite, lots of Loctite on there. This is the side that as that's spinning and you come to an abrupt stop, this, this nut gets torqued in the loosening direction. So if you don't tighten these enough, it'll be the passenger side that backs off, not the driver's side. So whenever you're putting a, the driver's side nut back on, if you don't have a great nut, if it's not cotter pinned, make sure you lock tight the snot out of that. Don't have that come off. You'll ruin your bearing. <laughs> you definitely ruin the customer's day, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, so the rest of this, we'll just be slamming this back together. Uh, I'm gonna try and go quickly here because we're kind of running out of time, but uh, yeah, that's basically it. So, you know, sometimes it takes a while to beat on them. Sometimes you just few, try a few tricks. You can kind of hit these back and forth, back and forth, you know, pound out uh, a stud, cut the stud so you can get it physically out. You can put a bolt and nut in there to push off the knuckle. All different kinds of things to get these off. Sometimes they are unpleasant. Um, I've even had some before that, before I found out about the bolt and nut trick as a pusher. I've had some where what I've did is I took a, a cutoff wheel, an angle grinder, and I cut a groove into the inside of here so I could get a chisel behind there. Because you know, every now and then you get some that are nasty, especially, you know, Ford Escapes, Ford Explorers, early 2000s on the rear. <laughs> Gross. Uh, on those uh, Ford Escapes, you know, I worked at a shop that had a custom made slide hammer. It's about a 50 pounder. Two person job thing was massive. Um, end of the day, we we're having a staff meeting while they're uh, getting one of those hubs off. A couple guys, they almost pulled the escape off the hoist. It literally was sliding the whole vehicle on the hoist pad and it came close to coming off. That's how stuck they can get. Not so on this one, of course, thankfully. But make sure when you're tightening these, do one side a little bit, don't go all the way. Push that in. Now these ones here, you can kind of, since we've done a couple of them, the third one you can kind of do all the way. If I can get on that. And then make sure you go back to the first two. Okay. So, like I said, not lock tight. All I do is kind of, hopefully you guys can see that. Kind of run on a battery life there, we're gonna have to switch that soon. So anything like this, what you wanna do is watch the socket, right? Hold your impact, go in a lighter setting. I'm only on two right now. Hold the impact down all the way and watch the lettering on the socket until it stops. Okay, hopefully you guys saw that. All right, so we will torque that later. We can get this guy shoved out of the way. 
rotor. I always keep extra axle nuts. And So these bolts here, again, lock tight them. You don't want these coming off. You especially don't want these coming off. There's a reason why all of these come with Loctite from the factory. Just an extra insurance policy. Make sure you're starting by hand. It's always a good idea to have, uh, especially for the first one, it's a good idea to get, uh, you know, like three, four, five threads. Get more than one or two. Make sure you're actually in there. Okay. Kind of loud. R21. Anytime you're using an electric impact for stuff like that, is that important? You know, usually what I'll do is I'll start on the medium setting, I'll let it hammer, 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 then I'll go to the high setting, just give it one or two clicks. Always make sure, make sure your battery's good, right? Because if you think you're letting that thing hammer, but your battery's low, well, you're not tightening it very much, right? Okay, so this guy here, put that all back. And if the, the clip that stays from the old one, if it's in good shape uh, and it, you didn't pull it out, you just disconnected it, opened it up, I'll usually use the old one. Put that in there, don't forget to plug it in. Make sure it snaps, give it a, tan, a tug. It doesn't come out, perfect. Alrighty, so I just realized my battery died, so I lost a little bit of footage, but I was pretty much done. Um, the only thing that I missed was, you know, I do torque those axle nuts afterwards. These ones are really nice and easy to do. You can just go through the wheel, the big open hole in the center of the wheel when you're on the ground. Uh, if you don't have that style rim, all you can do is when you get the brakes back on, just throw a screwdriver through the vents in the rotor, get it to jam up against the caliper, and then you can just torque it kind of there. Um, then of course, you know, when you're pulling out before you put it in reverse, uh, make sure you pump the brakes a little bit. So Auto has a handy feature where I can graph merge. I got the two PIDs on the same graph. Uh, you know, if you don't have the, the uh, larger scan tool like this, you could just use handheld scan tools. Autel has code readers that the, um, oh, I think they call them MD802, I think mine is. Just a little handheld guy that allows you to go into all the modules or you can look at data, that's all you'd really need. But we'll just kind of go forward. And we want to make sure, see how both the lines are going together? Gonna kind of put you down somewhere. Okay, there's no dropouts, there's no glitches, it's not flying off. The handle, the right front was glitching out, even just stationary. But right now we see, of course, I'm doing a big turn, so they're gonna change or spin at different rates. Now I'm going straight. And then when you come down to stop, that's when they would glitch out. 
right about there that last little bit you that's when you would see hash when you're going really slow on a bad sensor but this is a fix uh, and it was a hub that uh, cooperated came off nicely the whole job kind of went well usually they do but every now and then you get ones that uh, fight you well this ended up being a nice simple uh, hub bearing installation awesome didn't really fight me too much it's a good thing you know the one bolt was giving me a bit of grief going back in and you know, at the time I was kind of wondering about it well it came out pretty easily how come it's uh, giving me such a hard time going in well, we all laugh about service information seeming kind of funny when it says installation is the opposite of removal, right? Well, you know what? I pulled that bolt out last. What if I put it in first, right? Did it, you know, installation is the opposite of uh, removal, right? Um, it's quite possible everything would have been easy then. It's also possible if I put that one in first that whichever one I put in last would have been just as difficult as that one, right? I'll never know. But the one thing that kept bugging me is I thought, I was pretty sure that you had to pop the upper ball joint. I just had this thought in the back of my head just nagging away at me. It's been a while since I've done one of these. Um, but as you can clearly see, I was able to do it without doing that. Um, and then I thought about it. There is a design change on these Dodge half tons. The um, 2012 to 2020 has a different style CV axle than 2011 to 2002. On the newer ones, and this is one of the newer ones, the, the front nose of that CV joint comes to a nice taper. It's very gradual. Whereas on the old ones, the old ones is much, much more um, brunt about it. It's very blunt. It doesn't have a nice taper. So on the old ones, you do need to pop that upper joint. Yeah, I don't know if someone can somehow get them out without popping that, but the, the CV axle is in the way of those bolts. You can't, at least the ones that I've done before, I wasn't able to get the axle in enough. I wasn't able to get the bolts out all the way. They were still in a couple threads into the hub. Um, you know what, it's possible if you have the older style, you could pull the bolts out a little bit, fighting with that axle, and then crack the hub out a little bit, and then loosen them some more, and all that sort of stuff. But really, it's more hassle than it's worth. So every single one of the ones that I've done of the old style, I've always popped that upper ball joint. It doesn't really take that much time. Um, but on this style here, if you got a newer style, you can do it um, as shown without popping the tie rod, without popping the upper ball joint. It saves a bit of time. Um, this job here, if I wasn't filming it, um, you know, could have had the vehicle in and out in half an hour, right? Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Just kind of want to pass that on. Um, thankfully, I actually had an opportunity to kind of film the whole thing um, all the way through. Um, I had one section that uh, kind of lost the footage when I when I went to torque it. So um, I've encountered a lot of vehicles where axle nuts have backed off when they weren't torqued properly, or a, a, an old nut was reused. So. I'm paranoid about that, especially passenger side. That's the side that will back off with rotation. Um, so you know what? I put Loctite on them if they're if they're not caught or put Loctite on them, and I do torque them. So front rotors are slotted. So what you can do is you can put a screwdriver in the slots of the rotor, get that so it's jammed up against the caliper bracket, and then you can torque it there. Otherwise, you know, in a vehicle like this, it's got a big center cap, you could just put the wheel on. Uh, put it on the ground, torque it that way. Um, some have center, some rims have center caps that come from the inside. That's a bit more work. You put the wheel on a couple, couple lug nuts, uh, put it on the ground. Then you can get through there. Then you got to take the wheel back off so you can get the center cap through. Um, I usually just put a screwdriver in there um, against the caliper bracket. You know, the screwdriver doesn't bend. It's you can torque it just fine. 
Um, that's what I do. And then you know, go for the road test. Or you don't even have to go for very much. You just go out, basically just run around the building. Uh, saw that the sensor wasn't glitching out. Um, it was working perfectly, no light on, all that stuff. So it's a fix. Anyways, just wanted to share this on. Um, hopefully you kind of learned uh, a couple of little tips or tricks along the way. I know it's a pretty straightforward, pretty simple um, process, but uh, you know, I had an opportunity to film it. So I want to share it. So thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.